Hello friends, I'm Ashish Tarbari, founder and CEO of Axamize, and to our new listeners, welcome, and to our old ones, welcome back. So last week we had a very exciting um, RISC V Global Forum, an 18-hour international conference that was extremely educational, and uh, I had a chance to talk about some of the work we have been doing at Axamize, and I just wanted to take the opportunity to do a recap of some of the interesting observations and thoughts and questions that came out of uh, this uh, RISC-V Global Forum. So I want to talk to you today about everything you ever wanted to know about RISC-V architectural formal verification. So many interesting questions were asked during the talk and um, also after it, I received many emails um, asking for more information. So. I decided to actually take the opportunity to summarize all of these questions, especially the most commonly asked ones, um, in an article which has actually just gone live on tech design forums. So you're welcome to go um, and and have read through. But now I want to actually just summarize some of the most important ones, um, and I'll leave you to it to go and do your own reading. So first of all, what is architectural verification for processors? So this is the verification of a design implemented against architectural requirements or specifications. So it's not only limited to microprocessors, but can also be used for GPUs and networking designs. So architectural verification basically means you have architectural requirements mandated by an architectural specification uh, whether it is one of these standard ones coming from RISC V or it could be an internal company based uh, architectural specification, uh, ARM being a classic example of ARM having had their own ARM architectural reference manual. And effectively, one then verifies different implementations that uh, different people and you know, groups make and make sure that those implementations do not violate the requirements of the architectural specification. So then what is RISC-V architectural formal verification? So how does formal verification fit into this? So it can, the way I look at it, this is, is defined as the kind of verification activity that is still trying to accomplish compliance testing, um, you know, making sure that the implementation doesn't violate the requirements of the ISA. But now we are using formal verification under the hood to do that. So that is what is RISC-V architectural formal verification. And now you may ask me, so is this kind of a compliance testing? And the answer is yes, it is um, a compliance testing methodology based on formal verification. However, if you look around in the RISC-V ecosystem, people are not actually using the word formal and compliance testing in the same sentence. And that's because the compliance testing that people in the RISC-V ecosystem commonly refer to is a simulation-based testing of the implementation as opposed to using formal. Um, so I think the reason is because a lot of the uh, community in verification is, um, uh, you know, is very familiar with simulation. They've been using simulation for many, many years. They understand it much better than they understand formal. That's a de facto go-to uh, strategy. And that's why a lot of the compliance testing framework has been built using simulation. So now you may ask me if that is already in existence, why bother doing formal methods? So I would argue that formal and simulation A are quite complementary, but also at the same time, one of the biggest disadvantages of simulation-based testing is its inherent limitation and its scope that it can't actually uh, drive all of the exhaustive um, stimulus. And it has been uh, widely accepted. Everybody knows this, and people are very happy to work around those limitations by exploiting coverage and other such mechanisms. So in the case of architectural compliance testing, the scope of the work is often to check the existence of a simulation trace to validate if a given test based on an instruction can pass or fail on a given implementation. So by the very nature of how compliance testing is often done, it's actually existential, and it's trying to find an existence of a test that passes. 
The scope is not to test all combinations of instruction interleaving and register operands, and that's what I heard repeatedly during the RISC V Global Forum as well. So formal methods-based testing, however, does not rely on any input stimulus. So the way formal um, technologies work is they inherently rely on requirements and we formalize them as formal properties, and then we let the formal tools drive automatically all possible combinations. And whether or not we can actually achieve the end result of uh, a passing proof or not depends very much on the methodologies being used and the mechanics of how these properties have been formalized, etc. But in principle, formal tools are very much capable of achieving this. So now you may say, okay, I heard formal verification uh, can find corner case bugs, but often cannot find a conclusive outcome due to massive state space uh, explosion problem. And in fact, you're quite right. In general, both observations are true. Uh, one reason why formal methods hasn't seen a wider adoption is that when formal texts do not converge, it is often not easy to know why, and certainly not easy to force a convergence. Writing properties in formal languages is often easier than you think, but getting them to converge in a formal tool is often harder than you imagine. So this is one of the primary reasons why formal methods hasn't gained enough adoption, and one of the ways in which we are driving this change in the industry is by training people, teaching them about good methodologies. But you know what? The good news is that we have actually distilled down all of this in our architectural formal verification solution uh, in the form of an automated app, which we call Formaliza. So Formaliza is an architectural formal verification app that we made at Axiomize to actually take the grunt work out of people's lives of having to write the properties, gain the expertise to write them, although you're very welcome to write them. And if you want to learn how to write them in the most efficient way, we are here to train. But Formalizer basically works by modeling all of the architectural requirements in the Publishers 5 instruction set architecture as formal properties that could be exercised in formal verification tools to gain exhaustive analysis and exhaustive correctness of the design. Uh, equally, these properties could be taken out of the app and could be put in simulation environments and you could actually rerun them in simulation. Although the scope of our app is very much to encourage you to take the benefits of formal by using the app with formal tools. So how is the app different from simulation-based testing? Well, the key difference is that all instruction combinations, operands, and interleavings are examined at the time of verification of each instruction for which we have a property. During the formal verification run, what happens is that when an instruction is uh, being verified, what we do is it checks the life of the instruction from the point of issue to the point of commit. So an instruction that is being verified will be issued at any time and any number of times. It can be and will be preceded and followed by any number of instructions until the instruction being verified is committed or written back. The check done in Formalizer also examines all register operands for all instructions. So when we are actually verifying a property for a branch of equal to or an add instruction, we are interleaving that check with all other instructions in flight. So if any of those other instructions can cause a distortion and can cause failure to, um, to manifest or a bug to manifest, we will find it. So for load store checks, for example, it even examines all possible variants of these, such as the load byte, you know, the load half word, word, double word, etc. The aligned, misaligned cases for all addressable memory locations. Yes, all addressable memory locations. And how exactly are we able to then demonstrate that what we have built works is because we have several quality markers. So for example, we start out by carrying out design mutation to assess if bugs artificially introduced in the design trigger failures of properties in the formalizer. We use hooks from different formal tools to assess if there are any over constraints in the property set. We carry out an extensive human review and test multiple RISC V core implementations to obtain coverage data from the field. In addition to all these three, we also provide you with coverage metrics to indicate quality. You can now visualize these and link them back to the overall verification plan. 
In fact, at this time of speaking, we are already working on the CV32 E40P core from open hardware. And that's exactly what we are doing week after week. We enable you to reproduce these coverage results across different formal tools, as well as simulators and emulators. So this brand new coverage analysis is the first time in industry anyone is looking at coverage for formal in this way. So I strongly encourage you to actually go to the article and have a read through and understand what these different things are. And come back and talk to us and let us know if you want to hear more on these things. If you agree, that's fine. If you disagree, that's also fine. And you will find answers to other questions. For example, what are the details of the ISA coverage analyzer? Um, do you need to be a formal verification expert to use Formalizer? Does Formalizer cover custom instructions? What do we need to use Formalizer? Can we find exhaustive proofs? Can you find bugs? So we go into details of all of these questions, which I will now defer uh, for you to read them in the article. But for now, thank you very much for listening in and do let us know whether um, you liked it or not. Next week, we will be back with an exciting guest in-house. And um, yeah, please subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't done that and email us at info at xmis.com. Till then, keep safe and we'll be back next week. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.